Well, I would say at running back, Chris Rainey's really had a good spring. You know, he's a guy that uh, makes an awful lot of plays. I think getting the ball deeper to him in the backfield helps him. Uh, he's got great vision and cutback ability and bounce ability. You got to be really gap sound uh, on him in the run game. I think as a whole, the offensive lines, you know, progressed well. Uh, they've had an awful lot thrown at them on, from their standpoint, from learning a new offense, terminology and such, as well as what they're seeing on defense as far as odd and even fronts. Um, you know, Jordan Reed had, did some really nice things last Friday uh, as far as catching the ball vertically down the field. Quentin Dunbar made some plays Saturday and scrimmage part of what we're trying to do, which is a pleasant surprise. Uh, uh, you know, defensively, I think Dominic Easley's having a really good spring. Been very pleased with his progress. Sharif Floyd's done some good things. Uh, Laurente McCray has done some nice things for us. Uh, John Bostick and Jelani Jenkins have both been very productive as far as the linebacker play is concerned. Matt Elam's done a nice job from the safety position and has played some nickel as well. Um, and Jeremy Brown has done a nice job at corner. Off the top of my head, those would be the guys. Caleb Sturgis kicked the ball well Saturday. Very pleased with his progress. And Kyle Christie's done some nice things in the punting game with our punt unit. So those would be the guys just off the top of my head that would jump out at me. Mac Brown sustained an injury, uh, I believe, Friday at practice. Uh, and a uh, broke a fibula, which is the uh, non-weight-bearing bone. And it's a three-month procedure. He will be fine. Father was in town Saturday, and he'll have uh, his surgery on Wednesday. How many tailbacks do you have left now to work with this spring? Well, Trey's working some at the age. Chris Rainey is. Uh, and then uh, we've got some other guys we're just repping through there. So but that's kind of where we, are, where we are. Trey was repping some third down to it previously for protection reasons. Uh, but, you know, that's where we are, and that's, that's what we've got to work through. We're just a little thin there. How about Mike Gillisley? Mike still, you know, still he has a little bit of a stress fracture. So we're holding him right now. Uh, Mike could probably work through it, but I think right now we need to get him healthy. Uh, so those guys needed reps, needed spring, but it's unfortunate, but that's what happened. We will deal with it and move on. Some of the offensive linemen were saying yesterday that John Brantley is a more vocal leader this year. I know you don't, you can't compare it to last year, but what have you seen from him in terms of being a leader on your football team? Well, again, I think John, in, in a sense of learning a new offense, is a freshman again as far as the, the you know the different uh, ball handling and, and the, the different thing Charlie has him doing. But I've been very pleased with how he's managed our football team and made plays down the field vertically in all practices, but also Saturday when we were in a, in a scrimmage tempo. Uh, so I think that I've been very pleased with what he's been able to do. Have the guys picked things up at, at a pace that you like, or are they a little bit behind, a little bit ahead? We feel think? comfortable with where we are. I think it's all relative. Uh, but uh, I've, I've been pleased so far uh, with the retention on both sides of the ball and in special teams. You know, But again, today was a day you just got to continue to push forward. You're in day eight. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. And it's you've got to continue to step forward and strive to improve yourself, practice with a purpose. And we had some guys that did that today, and we had some guys that didn't. And it was very evident early in the day, and I thought we picked it up and ended up okay. Is it looking more and more like Brantley's going to be the guy in the fall, or is it still too early to, to tell? Well, again, I think John's had, had a good spring, and I think he's playing well right now. I think he's doing a good, nice job managing our offense. Again, but we were, we're in practice eight, and we've got a lot of time to go. Can you talk about what you've seen out of Tyler and Jeff so far? I think both of them have made some plays. I think uh, you know Jeff is a guy that uh, you know, should be getting ready for the prom right now. So I think we all need to keep that in mind uh, as far as what we're doing. But as far as the ability, the uh, athleticism, the arm talent, the mental capacity to learn and to do things the right way are all there. Uh, it's just he's in his eighth college practice and he's got an offense where there's an lot on the quarterback as far as at the line of scrimmage, making the right checks, getting in the right run, getting the right protection, uh, taking the ball the right place. I mean, there's a lot going through his mind right now on top of the fact defensively is seeing an awful lot of looks. Uh, and Tyler's done some nice things as far as the pocket movement things and managing our football team. Uh, so, I, so I think that there's been some bright spots in both of those guys and, and, and a bright future in both of those guys. Do you have a goal for when you'd like to know who your starting quarterback is, like going into August camp or anything? Well, I think you know when it happens, and I think that we'll, we'll continue to work through that. But right now, John, John would be that guy uh, based on where we are. What kind of shake is Brissett going to get when he gets here? Just like anybody else, if he comes in and he's the best player at his position, he'll play. He'll start. I mean, I don't, you know, we're going to play the best players. We're going to play the, 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 play the players that give us the best opportunity to be successful and win football games. So uh, he will be given every opportunity in the world. Well, is your defense ahead of your offense right now? Typically in the spring, the defense is usually a little bit ahead. Well, I think, you know, just from the standpoint, we're both on a huge learning curve right now. 
Um, but uh, but I, I don't know that I would say one is ahead of the other. Uh, I don't. It's hard to say that. We're cross-training a bunch of guys at different positions. We're not getting ready for a game. It's not about winning the drill. It's about getting our football team better right now. And, and that's really the way I look at it. In each individual instance, is that player improving himself as opposed to, you know, we won team run today. I mean, that's not helping us win games next year. We moved several guys on defense today positionally. We did on offense as well to get our best 11 on the field. Well, were there some mistakes made? Yeah, were there, we were expecting mistakes to be made because we're, we're trying to get our football team prepared for the fall and for fall camp and get ourselves better. And uh, we, you've got to be able to move guys around to find out if they can do it because you don't ever know till you do it, till you try a, a guy at a different spot. So those are the things we've got to continue to work through. Any of those moves go particularly well that you think might stick? Well, again, I like to watch the film before I ever make a comment. You know, just been on the field today. I thought we did some nice things in the rush packages we looked at and uh, moving some guys around defensively I thought was, was nice. But, again, there, nothing's in concrete. We're just trying to experiment and, uh, and build depth on our football team to get the best 11 on the field instead of just plugging a guy in because he's the backup. What have you seen out of Cody Riggs so far? And are there any concerns about his size for you at all? No, not at all. I mean, I, you know, Cody's a good football player. He's got a tremendous heart and ability as far as playing hard and playing fast and and doing the things you got to do to be a good football player. I mean, I, you know, everyone gets to caught up in size and height and things. And I've been labeled as a guy that loves height by our people that recruit against us. But I will tell you this, that I've had a guy named Gerard Powers that started for me at Auburn. It was about five, eight and a half, and he's starting for the Indianapolis Colts, and he started as a freshman. And he played nickel and he played corner. I had another guy named Jonathan Wilhite who was about five, nine and a half, who started for me for two years, and he's starting for the New England Patriots now. So it's not about how tall you are. It's about if you make plays or not. Um, sure, we'd love to have a 6-3 corner, but is that realistic? Is how many are those out there? I don't, I don't see many of them. So. No, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with playmaking ability, and Cody's been very productive throughout the spring. I'm very pleased with where he is. Other than Gillisley and Mac Brown, have there been any other injuries of significance? Nothing off the top of my head. Just thinking, you know, in terms of uh, the other guys we have talked about going into spring, and Jay Howard and uh, Kedrick Johnson. I think those are the only guys that I have. What's in your balls? Core, anybody? I'm sorry, Rachel. What's in around balls? I know he's not practicing this spring, but he had, his, he he had a procedure done today, and uh, he's going to be fine. And we're just, you know, working through that with him right now and his family. And it's an unfortunate situation, uh, but uh, he's a fine young man, and uh, you know, you know, things happen in life. Sometimes you don't understand, uh, but he's handled this as well as you could handle it. And uh, we're we're all praying for him and his family right now. But he's going to be fine. The prognosis is very positive, and we feel very comfortable about where he is right now. What do you mean procedure? Surgery? What, what yeah, yeah, a done? procedure. I, I don't. I'm not a doctor. I, I don't. I don't really know what exactly the procedure was. Have How you just? Have you discussed his football future? Is no, I'm not worried about. It. I'm not worried about his football future. I'm worried about his overall health right now. It's that's the very you know the least part of my mind right now is worried about his few football future. If you could talk about the wide receiver group and if anybody in particular stood out. Well, I think consistently Frankie Hammond and Omarius Hines have done a nice job. Deontay Thompson, I think Quentin was a guy that kind of blossomed the other day and did some nice things down the field vertically for us. And that he gives a, a bigger receiver that can stretch the field vertically. Um, but, uh, you know, Andre Dubose has been a guy that sprained ankle, has been out a little bit, but he's going to be fine. He's going to be back to nothing serious there. Uh, we just need to get more consistency at that position past those guys right now. And that's what we're looking for. A couple final questions, guys. I'm sure you're as happy for Jeff James and everything he's done on the track as pretty much everyone else is, but can you give us an idea of how tough that's going to be when he comes in in August and only has about a month to learn everything before being Well, he'll, be, he'll work through the whole summer. He's been a part of all of our meetings and all of our walkthroughs. So he's been in our building. He's been working on football. It's not that he is totally – Mike's been great as far as that is concerned. I mean, I, you know, when Mike and I sat down and, and – uh, if a young man wants to play two sports here, as long as he handles what he's supposed to off the field and academically, I'm 100% I'm for it if it's going to help the University of Florida. So he's been in all the team meetings? Yeah, he's been he's been in everything. You know, the, there was not a track meet conflict as far as with the indoor season and the outdoor season. He's been a part of what we're trying to do. Uh, so mentally, he's, you know, he, he has an idea of what, what we're going to ask him to do in the fall. And then this summer, after the outdoor season is over, our players will conduct seven-on-seven seven and team drills throughout the summer on their own without coaches. So he will be involved with that. And then when we start uh, camp in August, he'll be competing for the starting job. 
So, uh, but again, you know, here's a guy that's won a national championship in the 60 meter, and his team won a national championship. He was able to bring another national championship to the University of Florida. I have a hard time telling a guy he can't run track. I think that's pretty selfish. So I, I think that that's a very positive for the University of Florida. It's positive for Jeff Demps. It's great for, for, for us. And, and so I'm very happy he's had the success he's had, and I hope that uh, he does it in the outdoor season as well. And I don't think mentally he's going to be so far behind that he won't be, be fine in the fall. I really don't. And I think that he's been a part of our meetings and what we're trying to do schematically. Final question, guys. Possibly talking to him and having to sit down about choosing track over football before the season even starts. Has that crossed your mind? Before. Before the football season starts, if, you know, he starts thinking maybe professional track is the way to go. Have you even thought about talking well, no, he's, about he's that? playing his senior year. He's going to play his senior year at Florida. And after that, I, that's, that's his decision. But, uh, you know, he wants to be on the football team and play in the fall, and that's what he's going to do. And I'm excited about that and excited about having his athleticism and speed and, you know, playmaking ability on the field. And, and after his senior year, whatever he decides, I'll support him 100% regardless of what's track or football.